This feels like a porno with a moronic, <laughs> nonsensical plot designed as an excuse to shove in fight scenes. Your point? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? <laughs> I won't even go into the stupidity of this film and will just say that a person with a gun could kill all of these idiots <laughs> who fight using nothing but their fists. But they justify why their guns yeah, can't be there's there. there's no guns there. <laughs> I guess low IQ teenagers might find this enjoyable, but most others won't. As someone who was a low IQ teenager, I am very <laughs> offended. <laughs> that was a one-star review from IMDb. Welcome, everybody. We are Spoilers Intended, a podcast about series and films. Ryan is over there and just found a piece of candy on the floor. Hey, Ooh, Christmas came early. <laughs> Halloween came early, you mean. There's barely any <laughs> floor dirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not dirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, so I'm Stephen, joined as always by Andrew. Hello. And we've already introduced Ryan. I'm here. <laughs> Ch- choking it down. <laughs> All righty, so we are kicking this off. I don't know. If that one-star review gave it away. A porno with people who fight with their hands. I don't think it gave it away. I don't think it did. <laughs> could be any number could of movies. Could be a lot of movies. We're talking about 1973's Enter the Dragon. Enter the Dragon. That's right. Dragon, this is the Dragon, film Dragon. that put Bruce Lee on the Western world map. Is it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And kicked off. Well, so he was in Green Hornet as Kato he was. on the TV show. Yeah. But he was behind a mask for the, like most of the show, so mm-hmm. I don't think he was like people didn't. He wasn't a household name. Yeah. This yeah. made him a household. This also name. kicked off a kung fu craze in America. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely see it. There definitely wasn't a lot of martial arts films before this. Yeah. There may have been a not, few. Well, not in, in the West, in, no. Bruce yeah, Lee. Yeah, sorry, in the West. Or yeah. you were like viewing, you know, a Hong Kong Bruce Lee yeah. from the six fifties yeah. or sixties or something, and it was, you know. Either not dubbed or horribly dubbed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they're all pretty badly dubbed. But Bruce Lee was definitely one of the the people to really pave the way for stars like Jackie Chan and yeah. and a lot of other. I mean, Jackie you know, Chan's in this film. He oh you're yeah, right he is, he is. He is. He is. in this film he yep. is in this film. he has a, a cameo where you can almost see his face almost. in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> also, Sammo Hung's in it. Yeah, yes. yeah. I didn't and, realize that till this viewing. And, I was like. Uh, that's Sammo Sammo Hung. Yeah. And uh, Bolo Young. Bolo Young's in it, yeah. 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 Credited as like a different name, which I guess it's, Bolo Young is just the credited stage as name. like Bolo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or something. I don't know. Yeah. Either way, uh, yeah. So give, give let's, us a, uh, let's give us a synopsis. synopsis. This is uh, real simple here. Real easy. You can follow it. Just no problem. Try I, me. I, I doubt. <laughs> Try me. I doubt. <laughs> I guarantee I get lost. <laughs> A Shaolin martial artist. I don't get it. Travels to an island fortress to spy on an opium lord who is also a former monk from his temple, <laughs> under the guise of attending a fighting tournament. Mm. That, it. That's it? Okay. That's, that's pretty okay. good. Yeah, that's, 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 that's got it. it. That's yeah. pretty dead on. I think that's the script they had to work with sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, do we want to just jump in here with an immediate piece of trivia here? Yeah, do hey. it. Yeah. So the finished screenplay for action sequences had no details and literally were just written as they will be choreographed by Mr. Bruce Lee. <laughs> nice. So every fight scene in this, there's just nothing there for the it, script. It, yeah, he probably just got to filming that day and was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. yeah. Some of these fights, I think they had to do, uh, they did like 20 different takes of the fights. Mm-hmm. And when they would go from like one day to the next day of filming, uh, because of the nature of where they were filming and stuff, lights would have just been rearranged or not set up properly the right yep. way again. So they'd have well, to be you like, can you can definitely tell. Oh yeah, they'd yeah. be like, hold on, wait a minute, this isn't ah, just roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's, yeah. it's fine. Do we is there even a budget or like, do we have a budget number oh, yeah. for this? Oh yeah. Well, well so okay. So this was released in nineteen seventy three. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's directed by Robert Klaus. Okay. Uh, not a name I recognize. No, never heard of. And I made the mistake of not. Andrew, find out what else he's done. Sure. Uh, so this stars Bruce Lee, John Saxon, Jim Kelly, Kiana Shi. Robert Wall and Bolo Young. Mm-hmm. Music is by Lalo or Lalo. I don't know. Schifrin. Yep. Uh, or Yeah, Schifrin, yeah. So he uh, actually did the music on the Rush Hour trilogy. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, also did uh, the Amityville Horror. Okay, like the uh, 70s one with the, mm-hmm. not Josh Brolin, James Brolin. James Brolin, yeah, I think yeah. that's right. Uh, and like, uh, he has like a tremendous number of credits. Okay. Most of which I haven't heard. Yeah. But I mean, like, 
his list, it just goes. It's ridiculous. Yeah. There's a lot of Robert classes. Please hold. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> C-L-O-U-S-E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so budget for this film. Are you ready for this, boys? Hit me. Hold, hold your breath. $80. No, a- $850,000. Wow. In 19... So adjusted for inflation, that's like, what, $3 million probably? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, and, and also, they had an advertising campaign of a little over a million dollars. Wow, so they spent more advertising yeah, than they did they making the movie. This. Like, apparently, they had, like, like free karate ses- sessions set up with, like, dojos and stuff in America. Kung Fu sessions? No, no, it was karate. It was karate, Because there course. were no Kung Fu dojos in America. No. Yeah, they're not, yeah. Uh, but also, one of the reasons John Saxon was cast for this role is because he's a black belt in karate. Got it, yeah. Uh, so, this film, box office, made $90 million. Wow, what a return. I think they made their money back. Oh, so, inflation adjusted, that's over $500 million in yeah. 2023 dollars. And that's just domestic? No, no, that's just that's total. Total, total. okay. Still a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so... I mean, this movie was a sensation. It was... Oh, mm. I mean, this, this movie makes lists of, like, the top 100, top 500 movies you used to see before you die kind of thing. Yeah, It's, yeah. it's crazy. So uh, he basically teamed back... Or Rob, Robert Rob Klaus. Klaus uh-huh. uh, teamed back up with Bruce Lee in 1978 for Game of Death. Oh, wow. Uh, then he also worked with Sammo Hung and Jackie Chan in The Big Brawl. Okay. Um, in 1980. So he, he's done several kung he, fu. He, yeah, a lot of kung fu stuff. So uh, sadly, that 1978, that was well after Bruce Lee had already passed away. Uh, was it well after? I mean, the Game of Death, he died, like, they took incomplete footage and, like, mm-hmm, cobbled right. it together and released it. Right. So I He I, died on I, Return of the Dragon, right? No. And so that's the thing. Was so it I, Game well, of no, Lee wanna, died in 1973. Yeah. So... so Oh, wow. Bruce Lee died three weeks before Enter the Dragon premiered. Oh, really? Yeah. I did not know yes. that. Yeah, yeah. Wow, okay. So I thought it was like after. So okay. there's almost kind of like a, like for modern day terms, right? Like a Heath Ledger thing going on here yeah. with the film. Uh, yeah, fi- like basically, um, ba- yeah, class was provided incomplete footage mm-hmm. from Lee's original version of Game of Death that he had filmed basically like you know, five years earlier in 1973. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he must have filmed a lot of movies that, because other movies didn't get released till after End of the Dragon. Like mm-hmm. I think Return of the Dragon came out after that. Yeah. Uh, yes, I mean he's like, wild. well, because I, like I know Bruce Lee was really, um, I'm not like super up on all the Bruce Lee history, but yeah. I know that like he was def- like he was he had his own like not studio but his own kind of like team of people that were doing like kung fu movies and that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, to to you know because he wanted to. He had his own school, I think, at this point, too, if I remember yeah, correctly. I think so. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. In Los Angeles, I think. Yes. Wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, interesting note, obviously, which we brought up in our um, Ip Man um, episode, but uh, Ip Man, the actual one, not the one from the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the actual one, uh, he did train Bruce Lee, which is kind of one of his big like claims to fame. Um, which Bruce Lee used a, a mix of Wing Chun and Kung Fu and, you know, a whole bunch of other yeah, stuff. He, he created basically his own martial arts. He did. Jeet yeah. Kune Do, yeah. uh, which is a blending of, of several other martial arts. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want to hear some thoughts on y'all about this film. Give me some spoiler-free. So it's been, it's definitely One well, over, no, well over a decade since I've seen this movie. Okay. Right. And um, it's, it is emphatically 70s. Oh boy! Is it, it is ever, maybe it is. one of the most '70s movies that exists. It feels yeah. incredibly '70s. Incredibly '70s. Like so, I the watched, music is very like 70s. kind of. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! So I went on a like a, a, a '70s kick, a schlock kick for mm-hmm. a while, and I watched like Coffee. I watched Shaft. I watched Watch Dolomite. Uh, Dolomite, like yeah. a bunch of stuff. Like, it, and yeah. this was in there, and it fits. Right in, mm-hmm. like with well, the, this, this the film, pacing, the editing, the like, the music, everything. Yeah. This film got Jim Kelly cast in a lot of the the black exploitation era films. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And the it's very. Um, it feels like they were trying to kind of emulate a lot of like the James Bond style kind of espionage. Oh, a little yeah. bit, w- yeah. Womanizers, a little bit, yeah. yeah. It very does have a James Bond feel. It does, and the the way that they do it. Obviously, Bruce Lee's character is very 
uh, straight edge and it doesn't like yeah. womanize or anything like that. He's just there for the mission. And then all the other tertiary characters are the ones that are like, oh, yeah, yeah. this is like international man of mystery levels of like, you know, I have like four women in my bed. Well, and those like kind they of have things. their right, own yeah. moment of like, am I James Bond? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but like Bruce Lee also, there's a lot of little small like quirky moments of comedy for Bruce Lee in this. Yeah. Where yeah. he just kind of almost sits back and observes it and then has that little like smirk mm -hmm. going on. Yeah. I, I do like a lot of the martial arts in this it's but the 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 interesting part is is that a lot of the the actual fight it's much more um cinematic is the best mm -hmm. way to not i'm not gonna say cinematic i think that's the wrong choice of words okay it feels more um um over dramatized oh okay absolutely. Yeah. yeah yeah where like over exaggerated of like kind of what's happening well i feel like it's it is that like Early 70s filmmaking style combined, because like coming out of the 60s, mm -hmm. where a lot of stuff had gone psychedelic and zany, yeah. it was like trying to steer out of that. A little bit still, more pretty real. Still being influenced by that mm -hmm. to a degree. But then also you're probably working with a lot of the actors who weren't as, these are not like A-listers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of them are martial artists or they like, so you have like this weird conflux of like, Factors that make it like, yeah, like over dramatic is kind of like the best way to put yeah, it. Yeah, and the like, music doesn't help it either because they do like kind of like these tight shots in. Like, yeah. Well, and they do know. the, it's almost like it reminds me of 70s television that mm -hmm. like, the, yeah, the, the stinger of mm -hmm. the music where it hits when yeah. something like looks at something or zooms in, you know? <laughs> yeah. And well, that's a very like, it dates it, but it gives it a style that I kind of like. Well, there's you know? a, there's a, a substantial use of slow mo in this too, which yeah. actually mm -hmm. I think is done really well. Well, yeah. it's, it's interesting because, like we said, this movie you can put it on. You're like, oh yeah, that's the '70s, oh, yeah. but it has almost its own charm because of that. It does, 100. percent Yeah, because so, it, it's it's um, it's very earnest in just being exactly what it is. Yeah, I, this was the first time I had seen this movie. Probably like you, probably about a decade, yeah. maybe longer. Well, probably it's longer, been a long yeah. time. Since the I've seen most this film. I watched this was probably in high school when I had like I bought a Bruce Lee um, VHS like. Box collection set. yeah uh -huh. but it was one of those from like walmart that had like three legit bruce lee movies it was like enter the dragon return of the dragon and like i want to say big boss or something um, like fist of fury fist of fury fist of fury yeah or maybe chinese connection was in it it was like four of them Anyways. but then it had like two movies from a dude with bruce le like lay <laughs> and it was like they just threw it in there to like fill it out and make yeah. you think and i remember at the time you know this is like the internet was out but it wasn't like mm -hmm. you know Netscape. Where you went. you're dating yourself, and right I was now. like, "Who? Wow! I didn't know he made this many movies. Whoa!" And then you put, I was going through them in order, you know, and you put the last <laughs> one. I'm like, that's not even him. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> How racist is Walmart? Yeah, you think that well, I think so all Asians look alike. I'll yeah. definitely say that this was a lot more violent than I remember it being. Oh, see, I remember this being incredibly violent. Yeah, especially like going from like I'll say like a Jackie Chan film, which mm -hmm. is violent, but it's a different kind of violence. It's, yeah, it's the kind of it's almost like I don't want to call it Disney violence because Disney just straight will kill someone on screen. But <laughs> you have these moments where you're like, he's not dead. He's just lying there. Yeah. He'll yeah. get up in a minute. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But this was like, oh, like, he's dead. Like they're like if you watch it with closed captioning, it's like neck snaps, bone snaps. Oh, yeah. Oh, back, yeah. Backbone snaps. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, <laughs> was, they straight out like in a. Five minute sequence. They're like, we just killed eight people. Oh yeah, yeah. And individually with the well, camera close up. Yeah, close up like, on it wasn't it. like, oh, they died in the background. They, like, they these are like cliff. Yeah. visceral yeah. deaths. But I feel like compared to other Bruce Lee movies, and this is I'm straining my memory a little bit just because it's so long since I've like mm -hmm. sat in a watch. I feel like the fights in some of the other movies were better. Yes, but they I, were more one on one or like. I think yeah. these fights rely one. Too much on point of view shots. They do. Yes, which there's detract, a lot of which POV. Which detracts from the overall because you just you have one person who isn't. They're holding a camera. They're not doing martial arts, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So that detracts from it. And then, like you were saying, th there's not a lot of one on one fights, which is what I remember. Yeah. Whereas here, there's a whole lot of just Mook runs up, takes a punch, goes down. Mook runs up, takes a kick, goes down. Yeah. And we move yeah. on. It's like yeah, this is not really martial now, arts. There are some pretty fantastic sequences though at the end where. Bruce is really just railing like multiple kicks into like guy after guy after guy. Oh yeah, I mean, he's, like, just, he's just showing off yeah. at that point. Well, I mean, yeah. dude has like point zero negative zero body body fat. People in this have film. stand next to him; their body fat goes down just from being like <laughs> in proximity to him. But no, 
I liked it. I thought I thought it was fun. It yeah. is what it is, though. It's definitely a vibe. It's this definitely is, is unapologetically yeah. 70s. So you have to be like in the headspace for that well, to really yeah. Fully... And if you've never really seen like these older kung fu movies before, yeah, it is exactly what you think of older kung fu movies being. Yeah, well, this, this is the blueprint one, that yeah. like this yeah. one is even almost kind of jacked up to like eleven, mm-hmm. right? Because this this is rated R. This earns its R rating kind of across the board. Yeah, because yeah. we don't just have violence and people die there's some nudity there's some nudity in this you know like it's it's like all over the place this is almost kind of like the film it's like james bond wishes he was this kind of thing yeah definitely the this is like the grittier darker because like james bond Bond always runs up to the pg-13 ledge and then stops yeah and bruce is just like this just yeah this is going going. Yeah. yeah the thing that too that like I, I've always known it. It's just, it really resonated this time. Was it like, man, this was just a straight up inspiration for both Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Oh, like yeah. Some oh, weird yeah. dude has an island, has a tournament. Everybody's <laughs> here. Don't bring guns. Let's fight. Yep. You know, and it was like, <laughs> it was like, you know, the people that would go on to grow up and make, you know, Street Fighter yep. and Mortal Kombat, every fighting game, because they're all based on tournaments. Watch this as a kid. and was like, okay. <laughs> Yep, this is, this is how it idea. works. <laughs> I got a blueprint. I got to get you, know? you off the island. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, so, I mean, it's it's really hard nowadays, right, to watch this film and not and be like, boy, this is just a product of its era. Well, it is. It's but it definitely is. Way. But that's the thing is, like, you have to look at these these films, especially, like, Enter the Dragon, because it, it was so popular back then. Mm-hmm. Like, $90 million in... 70s money is a lot it's of money. It's ludicrous. Incredible. And this was definitely before the blockbuster was even a thing because right. Jaws came out in 1975. Yeah. And you have these kind of moments in, like, you know, I'll say film history that this is definitely, if you have even a tertiary inkling to like martial arts films at all. You've probably you already seen this. <laughs> you either already seen it or you definitely need to see it if you haven't. Just because this is the proto version of a lot of films that you that have come after it. Yeah, absolutely. And it definitely has like um it it's I would almost go as far as to say it's not quite required viewing, but it's definitely like possible because it gives you such a appreciation for where things were kind of, yeah. and where they go. So yeah. if you jump from this to like Drunken Master, the first one from like 77, 78, yeah, somewhere around there, something like that, yeah. right? You see like, okay, this is back in Hong Kong. They've taken it up to this, mm-hmm. you know, and then you can see the influx of, you know, Chuck Norris movies in the 70s that yeah. come out after this, like oh, the then, Octagon. And Steven and, you know. Seagal makes an appearance. And then you have then the then 80s the, with Van Damme Van and like Dan, other Dan, people. Yeah, and then yeah. you start to see like the, the knock on effects of it. So it's, it's definitely the the. Um, it's the blueprint. It is well. It, it, it not because it's the first, because there were yeah. definitely you know other, 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 other movies. I mean, Bruce films. Lee yeah. has kung fu films before this. Right, film. right, right. But yeah. it, it was the like the flash point. It was like yeah. the, yeah. the 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 inciting inflection, inflection point. Is the inflection, inflection point. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It was the inflection point that where point, like that name, that term was real hot on this uh, podcast there for a while. We got away from it. Okay, we're bringing it back, baby. <laughs> we're bringing it back. <laughs> it's back, baby. Yeah, I like the movie though. All right, so let me invite you to my island of content that we have. <laughs> no Show guns allowed. <laughs> no guns allowed. This is a tournament of content. You can only bring your ears. <laughs> <laughs> so spoilersintendedpodcast.com has access to all of our existing episodes. We have new episode every week. Um, and we also have links to Discord, social media, all that kind of stuff. You should definitely check it out. It's a good island of content. <laughs> yes. You want to join... <laughs> The tournament of spoilers. You can join us on Discord. Oh my God. Come have a talk with us. I want to see your pets. I want to see what you're cooking. We've got threads down in there with spoiler hubs where you can talk about ongoing TV shows, other movies, things we've reviewed, things we haven't reviewed. Uh, but yeah, just hang out with a bunch of other listeners, you know, chat about what you're playing, etc. Yeah, and if you want to find the radio on this island to signal the outside world for help, <laughs> you can go to two places, Facebook and Instagram, and you can follow Spoilers Intended there. Just make because, sure you know Morse code whenever you're doing it. Yes, we only speak to everyone in Morse code. That's not true at all. Please follow us. <laughs> all righty, we are back. We have successfully... Sent out the message. 
We have fled the island. Spoilers <laughs> are behind us. Man, no, I love that song. The spoilers are before us. Yeah, they're... <laughs> <laughs> the spoiler-free section twist. is behind, behind us. us. Hong yes. Kong's behind us. We're headed to the island of spoilers. Yeah. Yes. We'll make that analogy work somehow. Man, I love that song so much. It's a, it's a good song. song. It's a great song. It's such a 70s thing. It's it's well, but, yeah. like, it really gets you in the mood for the movie. It does, yeah. Because like, obviously this was during the time... Sorry, I'm going to cut you off. No, no, this talking. was during the time when, you know, obviously all the main credits had to roll before the film started because yeah. of the Screen Actors Guild. And so you, you really needed that vibe to get in there. 100%, And it yeah. really does a fantastic there's, there's, job there's at a, it. There's very few movies that really nail that pre-movie uh, mm-hmm. credit roll where it makes it, like, engage. Some of them, yeah. there's just black screen with like text and so, then it goes away and you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> so one of the, uh, one of the ones that I've always found incredibly boring, which is one of my favorite films is the 1954, uh, 20,000 leagues under the sea. Oh yeah. Is it's just like text on a, on like a little like curtain thing. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. this is boring. Why yeah. are we here? But then you have this where you have great B roll of yeah. all of our characters, like going through the city of Hong Kong and it's fantastic. Yeah. Sorry. Continue. All right. Well, now that I have been <laughs> successfully derailed, let's let's get in some trivia here. Trivia. So Bruce Lee offered a hundred dollars to anyone who could catch his hand before he could jab them. That sounds like something he'd do. And he <laughs> never like... lost a penny for the entire production. Wow! Oh my gosh! Right. So in this theme, he was challenged. Was so, he punching in the same direction every time? I don't know. I don't so know. <laughs> they pulled in a ton of extras for this film, mm-hmm. including basically just like raiding every martial arts school in Hong Kong. I, w- I would imagine yeah. to bring in enough who could to have that many extras. Act yeah. like they could move that and like bring your own gi or whatever. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, so Bruce Lee was challenged by an extra who did not think he was that good. Bruce Lee proceeded to beat up the extra and then send him back to work. <laughs> <laughs> now get back in the shot, kid. So fights actually broke out on set between stuntmen and extras because they were members of rival triad families. Oh, oh wow. Oh, the, this production sounds buck wild. It sounds as wild as it probably like yeah. looked on screen. Like. <laughs> I wonder if like they they each had like two different factions. So whenever they had the big final confrontation, you're like, all right, you yeah. guys and you guys are different triads. You're yeah. gonna fight now. Y'all color your colors are black. Yours is white. Perfect. I've, if I got Get the scene there. for y'all, Get in there, boys. <laughs> then uh, people died on set. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> keep rolling. Keep rolling. Uh, so they did actually have to halt filming one day because a body was found on set. Oh my god. Like oh morning. my. So like because of the way they built the sets. Unrelated to the action on yeah, screen. Yeah. The way they built the sets, it was, you know, open air mm-hmm. basically. So every morning they would have to run off a bunch of stray dogs and squatters in the sets so they could start <laughs> filming. Oh my god. Oh no. where, where did they film this at? This is in Hong Kong. Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the island wild. is like nearish Hong Kong. Right. Like? So so the island is not like the actual island yeah. is they don't film on an island. They filmed in Hong Kong. Got it. Okay. So they could not find a place where they could film on an island. <laughs> right. So basically, so the actor who <laughs> I plays too much money. Well, yeah. no, they just they well partly that, but yeah. also like it was it was difficult with the government and everything else. Yeah, of course. So the <laughs> what are you uh, going to do on our island? No, 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 no. The the actor who plays the old Shaolin monk at the start. I don't mm-hmm. know his name. Yeah. offhand. Uh, so he also liked to fly planes. So he and the director just like flew around one day with his plane with the door open so oh the director gosh. could take photos of islands that they could then use it as a composite for that island Incredible. shot. Incredible. Oh, wow. Right? <laughs> so they never went to an island. This is all Hong and Kong. No seatbelts or anything. No, no, no. 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 Seatbelts. Like, they were probably up there smoking, you know. Doing no lines deal. of cocaine. No. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. Well, cocaine was the 80s. Never mind. Yeah. It was more late 70s. Yeah. Well, no, 73. Yeah. yeah. Too, it was probably more pot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but but, yeah. but cocaine's on the horizon in '73. <laughs> it's out there. It's close. It's, it's in LA for sure. You know. Uh, so the production had major issues with both American and Chinese crews who worked on the film not being able to communicate with each other. I was going to say sure. that was probably because they, they, they did not have enough translators. Well, you can definitely yeah. see like throughout the film, like obviously, clearly, some people are just overdubbed with English actors, and some people are actually speaking English. Yeah, for what, sure. What's interesting is basically every scene in the film is dubbed oh yeah that's just yeah. how they did movies yeah, back yeah then. that's just how they did movies but like a lot of people were still just actually speaking english on set yes yeah, yeah. uh so let's see uh so ken uh she 
So uh-huh. this is Han, this is the main bad guy. Yeah. He's actually a close friend of Bruce Lee's father. Oh. Uh, oh. So much so that they refer to each other as uncle and nephew. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Huh. So like, they they knew each other. Yeah. Like, Bruce like, Lee grew up yeah. knowing him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Oh, here we, let's get let's back, go back to the 70s aspect of this. Yes. <laughs> the production had trouble finding actresses to play the prostitutes and perform nude. Okay. So that's not had, terribly surprising given it's Hong Kong. Hold on. So they hired real life prostitutes. Oh wow. There it is. <laughs> when when <laughs> director's like, I got a real quick solution for this. <laughs> when he heard this, a another prominent Chinese producer, not related to this production, uh-huh. stated he couldn't understand that because he felt like all Chinese actresses were basically prostitutes oh, who would do anything whoa, for them. Oh, Holy whoa. 70s, Batman. Wow. Oh, man, that is... He said that with a cigar in his mouth confirmed. I, 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 I. Just like, <laughs> like, oh, boy. Oh. Wow. <laughs> God. What a dirtbag thing to say. Yeah. Uh, so on director Robert Klaus's first night in Hong Kong, Bruce insisted they go out together to a movie theater to watch one of his movies. Cool. Lee claimed it was to experience the atmosphere, but the real reason was Klaus was unaware of Lee's reputation and he wanted to impress him. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's like, yeah. Who are you again? <laughs> yeah, he's basically like, I'm actually a big star here, so we're going to go out in public and get mobbed yeah. by people who recognize me. Yeah, so you, you, have un- you understand what we're what doing here. What you're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. Here. yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. Kind of a big yeah. deal. If you can grab my hand, I'll give you $100. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, let's, let's, there's a couple more budget things here, right? So they hired yeah. 500 Chinese to build the set from scratch with no power tools. Wow. <laughs> so the steel bars in the prison uh-huh. yeah. were, was made by shaving down scrap pieces of wood because the labor was cheaper than going out and buying dowels. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Right? Oh. Just <laughs> What are you doing today? Well, you see this big pile of scrap over here? All this wood's got to be turned into metal bars. I'm sorry, what? I'll figure it out. It's a day's wage. One guy, yeah. yeah. So uh, the Cobra. They were good-looking bars. Whoever did that, if he's still Man, with us, good, way to right? go, guy. Yeah. That, that Cobra was so mad. So real Cobra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a real Cobra. Did Bruce Lee really smack it on the back of a head? He tapped it ten times. Oh my gosh. And was only bitten once. Only. He got bit by the cobra? I, he did. I, I do remember that this. they like removed the venom. Either by removing the glands of the cobra. Like yeah. it's a it's a specifically like bred for this or right. mm-hmm. uh, that, that cobra was so mad. Oh, that cobra was oh, so yeah. angry. <laughs> Especially if that's like the tenth take. We're watching we're it's like, are we done with it? Do you have the shot? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so because of budget issues, the entire film was shot using two cameras and three lenses. Well, I'll be. That's not, that's not terribly surprising. It's not that Especially shot. for like a, night, a, a mid-70s I mean, if you production. told me it was a single camera, I'd have been like, okay, yeah, probably tracks. <laughs> that's about right. Yeah. All right, well, let's, uh, let's get into this. Let's, uh, let's hear some spoilerific takes. So Bruce Lee's hair is incredible in this isn't movie. Isn't it, though? <laughs> it really is. So, you know, whenever I think of, like, Bruce Lee, the, the, the two images that always pop up in my head are mm-hmm. obviously the yellow jumpsuit and oh, that's game from of death. Big Boss. No, Game of Death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game of Death. And then is basically him without his shirt on with all with the, the scratch, the scratch, scratch marks. Yeah, the, yeah, like, the, claws. Yeah, the claw marks. And I always laugh whenever I see the final showdown because, mm-hmm. like, it's so janky. They just have, like, this little, like, claw hand that's just, oh, yeah. like, four kitchen knives just stuck yeah. into it. yeah. <laughs> Which, but I mean, they would still be formidable. Still be pretty and, yeah. I'll say this. Very impressive final scene with the mirror sets. Oh, the mirror? Because oh, you don't see the camera. All you I never see the how camera. How do you hide the camera? Oh, it's that. very difficult. Right? <laughs> and then on top of that, like, I feel like that type of scene has been, you know, used played multiple, upon and multiple used multiple times. But this one in, like, John Wick 3? Uh, two. Two? I think, I think it's two. Yeah. I because it's they two. also did it in James Bond. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've done uh, it before. Golden Golden Gun, Golden Gun, yeah. I don't know if this was the first time that happened or if it had been in TV shows before this or Mm -hmm. or if there was a movie. It was was fantastic. But their execution of it was really good. They claimed the production got the idea Mm -hmm. because they went out for dinner at a restaurant that was just mirrors everywhere. And they're like, oh, you know, it'd be a good idea. We could do that. (laughs) Where's our table? I don't know, honestly. I think it's over here somewhere. Is that our waiter? No, uh, it's just a refreshment. Where's the waiter? (laughs) Well, you see him looking with bread rolls. I need those bread rolls. Where's this guy at? So this is definitely one 
one of those like those kind of like finale moments that you really do see later on in just any kind of like oh this is a classic uh, throwback know, yeah. moment kind of thing for films pull up all well the time. especially yeah. whenever he's going around and punching all of the mirrors oh uh, yeah to to make sure that he knows where the guy's at even though like in real life there's no way you would Oh sure, yeah, yeah, but it doesn't yeah. matter. It's so still he was a really holding great a, a scene. piece of metal in his hand. To yeah, break to it. break it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you know, obviously, his fists are his money. He can't sure. just like you know. Yeah, I can't just. He looks at the yeah. mirror and said, "If you can grab my hand, <laughs> I'll give you a hundred dollars. <laughs> I won't shatter you." No mirror grabbed his hand. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, I think that's a fantastic scene. Yeah, and I really like the big brawl, uh, or actually, whenever um, Roland. Roper? Roper. 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 Yeah. When Roper is fighting Bolo at the end. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic fight. See, it's a really good fight, yeah. Because, you, you know, at this point, you're like, oh, no, he's going to die. Yeah. And, but, like, you, he actually gets his moment, which is really cool. Yeah. I think, also, on while talking about Roper, one of my other favorite scenes is the one where him and Williams are like, he's basically yeah. taking a dive so Williams can get the bet up. You he's, know? Like, he's like, you can get, you can get eight, <laughs> eight, eight to three, three to eight out of him. Yeah. Trust me, trust me. Because that, that whole scene, like he keeps looking over yeah. and he's giving him the subtle like, nope. And he's like, oh. and he keeps getting hit and hit and hit. And, and then, yeah. yeah, well, and it really shows just his skill as a martial artist at that point to mm. be to be able to to make it look as real as possible, and then be like, "All right, I'm going to turn it be on like, now." I yeah. can take a couple of hits and still beat you. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of not as skilled as possible, the guards, man, the guards are, are pretty incompetent here. Well, but that's the thing, though, is like they're not really there. They're me they're meant to be there to be mooks. They are, yeah. They and are. this is the quintessential. They like, get absolutely mooked. Let me tell you. Oh, yeah. I do, I do love activity. whenever he puts the cobra in like the little oh, radio the, the, room. The, I'm the, that's hilarious. The first yeah. thing that they do is just like, nope, we got to break the glass. Just yeah, I know. Sure, <laughs> immediately glass. going out. That would be my response too, though. So I like sympathize him. Yep, you got to throw that chair through that glass. You got to get out of there, <laughs> man. See, that's what I was like, so because I couldn't remember. I was like, so does one of them get bit here and dies? No, no, they just bail out. They just do it while Bruce Lee sits in the corner just smirking. I'm swimming away from this island tonight and he's like gone <laughs> yeah uh, I, lo I love that the cast of characters is so varied and colorful and different you got you know roper williams lee you got han as the bad guy mm -hmm. you got bolo you got in there whose chest bolo. is as wide as my body oh yeah he's <laughs> I mean, as well, one Lord. peck is as wide as your body That's what i mean not not his whole chest just half his chest oh, half is okay. my shoulder I mean, yeah. when he goes through a full-sized industrial doorway he has to turn he has sideways. Turn sideways. yes like, yeah even then guys, barely gets through <laughs> like when he goes out to go, like, go running he can't bring his arms down because his chest and yeah. biceps are well, so so Dude is just jacked. Yeah. He's the actual real life embodiment of that Captain America um, comic book cover meme. Oh, oh and the oh, Rob oh, Liefeld one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where he's got all that chest meat <laughs> hanging out, and it's like, this is not perspective. That's not how that works. <laughs> um, but even, even. No, he's looking at Bolo while he's drawing that. Yeah. This, this is what people look like. <laughs> even like uh, O'Hara, like he, even though he doesn't get a ton of speaking parts and we don't get like a ton of background with him as a bad guy, he's the one that gets thrown into the. Um, Oh, oh, the, the scar, the scar, 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 yeah, the guy that yeah. killed his, his uh, sister. sister. Yeah, which is yeah. such a weird side plot that yeah. just didn't even need to be included. But they go hard for that, where she like is like, "I'm going to be killed or like raped here or something." So she just kills herself. Oh, yeah. It's like, what the heck? Also, though, like uh, speaking of that, like that that also was a very '70s thing of like, okay, we're gonna have this is the series of flashbacks will mm -hmm. happen right here, and when they which flash I liked to her, the flashbacks of. Like Everybody the setup, else. yeah. Well, like, like we go out to Roper. He's like playing golf, making bets on it, and it's just like, oh, yo, I owe like the mafia or whatever. Right. Well, I gotta do something here. But with Williams, I mean, it escalated so fast. It goes, yeah, he's, zero he's, to sixty. He's like, quick. In, like talking to his sensei, like, yo, I'm, I'm headed out to the tournament. Cool. All right. Well, I'm just gonna walk down the street and get oh, the cops are here yep. harassing me. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's and like, it's, I'm stealing a cop and car like, and I'm leaving the country. Beat the crap out of the cops and driving off in their yep. car. But like the 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 flashback with the sister, like when it starts, you're like, why are we getting another flashback? Like I, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. good. I don't need a subplot with the sister in this. Yeah. Like I'm already invested. Like let's go. Uh, but then by the end of it, I do like it just because of the performance of uh, Sue Lin or the girl that plays Sue Lin. Yeah. Uh, his sister because right. like I mean, she sells out she sells out and she's got some good fight scenes she in there. she's yeah. like taking these dudes out and like well, I'm rooting for her so hard that when she does pull that glass out thing where I'm like man like 
you just need to put a little more mustard in some of these dudes so they'll stay down. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like, you're but beating like, the crap out of that them. That camera shot where it's like oh, out like, in front like of the right piece of glass. There, or it's, you know, I was like, ooh, that's a that's a good shot. But it's mm-hmm. it's a dark subplot and it's probably like unnecessary in a lot of levels. It like, is. It's kind of like emotional terrorism. It is a little bit. It's like yeah. we we have to give him a um a reason a to reason, like a reason to go off on uh, O'Hara O'Hara. later. Yeah, <laughs> which I mean and when he does, yeah. like it's it's so good. That's why I'm like, I don't hate it because it does kind of pay off mm-hmm. with the O'Hara fight, but yeah. it, it still just, it is, does feel like emotional terrorism of just like, here, we're going to go into this like flashback while I just spill my guts to you about this very terrible thing that I never told you about how your sister died. How did he think his sister died? Like the flu? Like what'd they tell him? You yeah, know? yeah. Like did he not <laughs> see the, the body? Like, yeah. Yeah. You know? And yeah. then he said, let me hit the, let me drop you this bomb real quick. But, but like that fight where he does kill O'Hara is a fantastic one, you know, because obviously he's O'Hara is just completely out of his depth. Oh, yeah. Bruce Lee is just yeah. letting letting rip on him. But then they do the slow mo of him just jumping on top of the guy, yeah, and you just hear like the really slow the bone crack. 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 Yeah, like, Ooh! that's probably Foley of like celery being broken or something. <laughs> they just let it. Well, know. so this uh, the the Bruce Lee films in particular have are very much like the Indiana Jones films of like whenever Harrison Ford hits someone, it is a two by four breaking. So the oh. the <laughs> sound effect that they reuse like a hundred times in this one is the body fall. Pup-a-pup-pup. Yeah. Like that. It's that not realistic sounding seventies, yeah. like cartoonish the, the tri- the triple yeah. bounce on a body. Buck up, buck up. You know, and it's every time somebody hits the ground, they're playing this thing. It's the same one every time. I'm yeah. like, y'all couldn't get like a different. Buck up, buck up. Look, there's only like 800 grand in this film, man. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's another thing that like by the end of the movie, I'm like, I'm watching him every time he flips. Like, Here we go. Buck up, buck up, buck up, buck up. And I'm like, it's the same sound. And right back to back. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Also, real quick shout out to Sammo Hung and Jap- Jackie Chan. So Sammo, obviously, is the opening fight. Mm-hmm. Looks like he's 16 years old. He may have been 16. He was very young looking. Yeah, he was pretty young at the, the 1973. Right. Yeah, he yeah. probably had so to he, be 16, 17. Well, so in Jackie Chan's biography, which I've read. <laughs> of course you have. <laughs> he, he, you know, they both went to, they, him and Yun Biao and son, uh, Sammo Hung went to the same school. It was like Chinese yeah. opera, right? And then when they got older, like the older kids, they started being like farmed out to these movie mm-hmm. sets as yeah, extras. They, they were yeah. like, like the, I can't remember, it was like seven something brothers or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it had like a, I can't remember it's it all Yeah. But uh, they, so they went to work on this movie or whatever. Yeah. And um, Jackie Chan's part was at the end when Bruce Lee finally gets the nunchucks. Jackie Chan runs in from behind and he pops him in the head and he falls into the tank of water. He's uh, the one that like goes like head over. Yeah. Right? Well, so he's actually supposedly according to Jackie Chan, he's in there twice. Right. He's the stunt man who gets popped and goes in the water. Yeah. He's also the dude who's he grabs the hair and breaks his neck. Uh, he was twenty. Oh. Sammo Hung was twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Young enough. But so <laughs> when he went into the water, Jackie Chan said that like you know he hit. Immediately, just pain because it's a real nunchuck. Yeah, you know, they're not using a foam so, nunchuck. It's got to look good, right? He falls into the water and he had to stay underwater while they continued to shoot and fight. In the movie, they cut pretty quick, but yeah. in reality, they filmed for another 30, 45 seconds of like of him, him just yeah. doing that. And then as soon as it was over, Bruce Lee was like, Oh my God, are you okay? I'm yeah, <laughs> like, so sorry. Smacked him. Just like profusely apologizing because like he, I'm sure he felt it when he like oh, yeah. whipped it back there. Just well, the solid it connection. Just bounced back with it. I mean, oh oof. yeah. Yeah. Well, so the thing that I love about that that scene is mm-hmm. you know, Bruce Lee is kind of like working his way up into like weapons. So he starts obviously with nothing, and yeah. then he has a big big staff, oh, and then man. he gets the he two. Nothing. He begins this whole fight with a snake. Okay, that's, that's true. Like, <laughs> very true. He starts the fight with a cobra. But like on top gets, of the food chain. <laughs> the second he gets the nunchucks, he is just like he, he does the whole bit, and you're oh, like, yeah. yeah, this is his, it's this on. Is his speed. Satisfying. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. And well, you and get that to see the poor dude that you know Jackie Chan. That's just oh, yeah. like. Uh, uh, this is a problem. <laughs> uh, also, like, I feel like that scene with the nunchucks alone, mm-hmm. right there, kicked off the entirety of the nunchuck craze that would happen. Oh, 100%. All the still, way through Ninja Turtles happening. and Michelangelo. It's still like, happening. Like, that scene <laughs> was like probably so many Western American people, mm-hmm. their exposure to even what a nunchuck was or could do. Yeah. They probably lost their mind when he's like, look at the, you know, flipping it around yeah. behind him. You know, they were like, I want to get those. <laughs> And then they I know, you know, I proceed to like break their nose yeah. because God. <laughs> no, I had a foam set. Did it you? A lot. Yeah. Yeah. I can still do some stuff with it. Uh, if I could ever find, I don't know what happened to my old pair. Gone somewhere. <laughs> yeah, bring them out. 
I'll, I'll break him out. Uh, so Jackie bring Chan was, uh, with him. Uh, he was <laughs> 19 for that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's a little Sam bit younger little than Samo. Yeah. yeah. Still just children. Just oh, little yeah, children. I mean, well, especially yeah. in this kind of industry. Oh yeah. Like where uh, really like your prime is like up until you're like 25, 26 for, <laughs> for like how much you have to like exert yourself to do this Endure, kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I do think it's interesting, right? We were trying to talk about how this is almost like over-the-top drama, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so Lee was actually really concerned because he's a he's a Chinese actor. You know, they're making this for an American audience. Right. Mm-hmm. He was worried that it wouldn't be taken seriously. He's like kept going back. I mean, the, he's not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But he kept going back to the writers being like, hey, this needs to be like serious. Mm-hmm. This needs to be serious. So he and I guess either one of or the head writer, uh, Michael... Allen? Sounds Allen? right. A-L-L-I-N. A-L-L-I-N, yeah. yeah. Uh, so they got into it over the script, mm-hmm. right? And because Michael was very aware that he could not do the $100 challenge, <laughs> uh, so what he started doing was he was rewriting the script and picking words he knew that Lee could not pronounce. Oh, that's just rude. Right? So Lee, of course, refused to work with him. Yeah. So, you know, demand, you know, script changes, all this other. So producers told Michael, hey, like, just lay low and avoid Lee for mm-hmm. a little bit. So they basically almost immediately encountered each other on a ferry in Hong Kong. Of course, Kong, yeah. Which I, all I can think about is, like, you've basically been taunting Bruce Lee at a distance. And you're like, hey, yeah, I need to get across this quick body of water. And, oh, he's on the boat with me. Like, Ooh. <laughs> yeah, like... Bruce, like Bruce Lee is from what I've heard. I mean, he always seemed like a like a nice guy. Like he wasn't. Yeah, oh he yeah. didn't like try and pick fights. Well, but there's always there's always some level of ego, mm-hmm. and also yeah. like what the writer's doing is is pretty dirtbag move. Oh, that yeah. was a total dirtbag move. And yeah. it's it's totally a, a, the move you take of hey, like it's literally Bruce Lee. Like I can't. There's no other realm <laughs> in which I can win against him. Yeah. <laughs> other this than is just it. I'm going to write words that he can't pronounce because yeah. his English is only so so. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, well, like. What did you guys think of Bruce Lee's performance? Not out, outside of the martial arts, just the like his actual. Well, I actually liked a lot of his little bits of him just like kind of sitting there and observing. Yeah, and it really like gives you a good sense of his personality. He has a good like wry humor. He does. Where yeah. He's not like over the top. He's not like super, but he's. I, I guess for me, more comedic than I remember. Well, like yeah. the bit on the boat going to the <laughs> island. <laughs> oh yeah, the, oh, guy, the, the guy's being a bully, and he's like, "Hey, we can't fight on on the on the boat, but let's get in the small boat. We'll row over to that island. We can fight on the beach." And yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure, dude. He gets in, and he just plays the rope. I was like, "Okay, bye." <laughs> yeah. But then in my head, I'm like, "So wait, what was the plan to get back in the rowboat and try to catch the boat after you have your fight?" That's just a couple of me heads. He's not thinking about that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a good move though, and he he hands the rope to those kids. It's like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. When well, well, he's like yelling at him, like, if you try and pull yourself up, I'll let go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, like, scenes like that I thought were great. Honestly, I was surprised because I remember this film for martial arts, mm-hmm. cheesy 70s tropes, yeah. and the bad guy being kind of a putz. Like, once a fight starts, a little bit, hair gets yeah. everywhere, and, and, you know, like you said, the claw is like four kitchen knives. <laughs> yeah. Which, like, I mean, like, it's still dangerous, it is. but it's just kind of fun. Yeah, silly. it's like, a cool fight, but it's not a good, like, martial arts fight. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't, it doesn't, yeah. like, well, it's kind that's of, not the fight that I think it's of. It's like a one-handed no. old man versus Bruce Lee in his car. <laughs> right. I don't know what yeah. you expect here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, having said that, I did not remember how good, like, Bruce Lee, John Saxon, Jim Kelly, yeah. like, the three of them on screen. Jim Kelly was actually they, really, really good. They dominate yeah. whatever they're around. Yeah, and, you you know, you always... you. You know that he's going to die, but you feel bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, you yeah. feel terrible. You still feel bad, yeah. But, like, the bits with uh, Roper and Han, mm-hmm. like, with the uh, the guillotine. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, and then the he puts cat. the cat in there. I'm like, no, don't you dare do that. Yeah. Like, because in my mind, I hadn't seen it in, you know, probably two Could, decades. I, can't, I, can't I was remember, like, I, was I can't like, remember. Does the cat really? die in this? Yeah, yeah, I had the same thing. of like, is he going to kill that cat? Like, I was no. like, how dare you? And then, and then Roper's just like, there's some lines I don't cross. And he picks the cat up. He's like, you got eight more. And then he yep. puts them and lets Which, them run That was off. a great, great little Which bit. I love to, he picks the cat up off the guillotine and the cat hisses at him. Like, that's such a cat. Like, I just saved your life. Yeah, I know. Cat. <laughs> the quintessential cat. <laughs> yeah, so apparently they had issues getting the cat, shocker, to sit on the little platform. No. Yeah, not surprising so, at like, all. When they do a close-up of it sitting on the guillotine, you can see just cat food just on its face. <laughs> <laughs> 
It's also how they got John Saxon in a lot of scenes. Come on in. There's some cap. <laughs> That's rude. I don't so know. I'll definitely say um, whenever, um, um, not Whit- Williams, whenever yeah, well, Williams Kill, yeah. is is fighting um, Han and then he gets kicked into like the opium den. Oh, yeah. You know, with all the laughing girls and stuff. All, that was just creepy. That it is, was. Uh, uh, yeah. Which I'm not, I know that's intentional, but it's like, man. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. It, it had like a surreal, like, oh, that was really happening. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, not on the set, but yeah, like, yeah, but just like in the in, world, in real life, like yeah. that. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. No, that, that definitely had, again, some of those holdovers of the, the 60s mm-hmm. style. Of, it was like, hey, remember the fun we were having in the 60s? It's got a dark underbelly. It's yeah. the opium den. It's got a, know, it's got a deadly slave trade, sex mm-hmm. trade esque. You know, he's going to murder these women later after they're drugged yeah, out. And then yeah. whenever the, um, whenever Bruce Lee is like going through like the underground section and he walks by kind oh, of like, like the, the girls the are holding like, like, pen. Hey, like, hell, yeah. Help. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Like, man. Yeah. Like, this that's is like dark too. really dark. Yeah. I, I guess as a, when I saw it in high school or like younger, I, I just didn't, didn't really think it of, didn't quite. Click, click yeah. how dark mm-hmm. it was. It mm-hmm. was just like, well, because you know, there's so many movies you see in the 80s or whatever where like there's people, you know, being held against their when you're like, oh, whatever, it's just part of it. Yeah, and like now it's but like, then you look at the context. Yeah, when you mm-hmm. do see the context of it as an adult, you're like, oh man, this is mm-hmm. pretty dark, actually. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, overall. Uh, I actually thought this was better than I remembered it. Yeah, yeah same. Like I, it, I really remembered the cheese. It's sti- yeah. well, it's still definitely a product of its time, but oh, yeah. it's it's absolutely like the proto blueprint for a lot of martial arts films, especially mm. ones that you know, uh, and a lot of just like tropes that have just existed in pop right. culture mm. for decades now. This started a lot. Of and it. it's, yeah, it's almost harder than a lot of the tropes. Like the whole, you know, oh, okay, it's rated R. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I kind of remember it being pretty violent. And then it's just like, hey, here's some new G's. What? <laughs> I yeah. really don't remember. That felt very 1970s three of yeah. like, yep. we can show boobs now, so let's. Yeah. Does the plot call for it? It does it, now. It does you know? now. Which yeah. hilarious. What a weird question to ask. When, I this, know. when this film hit that the UK. That question probably wasn't asked. So when this film hit the UK, they censored it. Oh. Not for the boobs. Oh, okay. Sequences where like Bruce Lee just had nunchucks. They're like, no, no, no weapons. Can't have weapons. Oh, oh, gosh. Gosh. oh you hate. <laughs> okay. What are you doing? This makes me want to dump tea United into a Kingdom. harbor so bad. <laughs> uh, all right. So, well, would you rewatch it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I, mean I've I have seen the Criterion this. Collection Blu Blu Ray set. So. I'm the Criterion Collection. Like, See, I thought I had this on DVD, but I actually have. Um, I think the dragon and the dragon returns. Oh, way of the dragon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where, and not way, way of the dragon. The dragon. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was like, yeah. like I went up and pulled, I was like, Oh yeah, I can just, I can just pop this in. I'll have to pay for this on YouTube or whatever. I was like, dang it. Dang. <laughs> <Nope>. Yeah. <laughs> JK. I've almost bought the same criteria collection multiple times. I'm really just joking out of jealousy. Yeah. Um, I would rewatch it. I, I, I definitely think to like recommend this to somebody though. It's like, you have to like give them the, it's like, hey, this is definitely the 70s. This is the 70s. And also, like, you've probably seen a lot of these tropes in other stuff. Mm-hmm. You have to understand, this is where that came from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's parts this may feel prototype. played out and hacky. Yeah. It's not. It's that you've seen people riffing on this for, you know, four yeah. decades or whatever. Yeah, 50 years. Oh. 50 years as oh, of Oh, gosh, this recording. yeah, it's 2023. Yep. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, you know, at the end of uh, <laughs> the Holy Grail where like the guy like ages a thousand years really quick. That just happened to me. You got Matt Damon at the end of Saving Private Ryan. And yeah. that too. Yeah. <laughs> well, already on that note with those lovely images in your mind. I yeah. Do you believe that is all the time we have for this episode? Well, Let's talk about our talk Patreon. Patreon oh, first. Yeah, for right. just one low dollar a month, you can get access to all of our bonus episodes, bonus content like... Bonus episodes. All the bonus episodes bonus, we've bonus already content, done. Like bonus episodes. <laughs> yeah. So the bonus episodes are a totally different format from this. Yeah. We do things like tier lists. We go in. Uh, we've looked at pictures of presidents and decided if we would fight them or not. Mm-hmm. We did a, uh, a Halloween candy tier list Oh, in we October. made ourselves yeah. sick. That one was woof. And it was woof. very sugary. <laughs> it was uh, very we, sugary. We let Chat GPT create movies titles for us and then tried to cast and write the plot. 
Yeah. Yep. Which is insane journey. Yeah. And you can <laughs> check out previews for all of our Patreon bonus episodes on the main feed. If you want to check a little bit of it out before, try before you, you buy. try before you buy, but for $1, you get all those bonus episodes. You get commentaries, you get access to our Patreon picks polls where you can pick the movies we review. You get a lot of content, $1 a month. And if $1 is too much or not in the cards, totally fine because yep. we would love for you to like and share our, you know, social posts and everything like that. Yeah, but we'd leave, really leave love you wherever leave you're us listening reviews. to this right now. It yeah. really helps us bubble up that algorithm. Got to fight the fight the AI. Yep. Oh yeah. Fight that good fight. All right. Well, on that note, that is all the time we have for this episode. So until next time, I'm Steven. I'm Andrew. And I'm Ryan. And every spoiler was intended. <laughs>